you guys welcome back my name is Sam if you are new to the channel this week we're gonna be making some stuff from the pantry I've got some stuff that I need to use up before it goes bad so that's what this week's video is all about is what's you you know use up what you got in your pantry so today we're gonna make some chicken fajita bowls now this recipe is on my blog um, I will leave it linked in the description box below but instead of making chicken fajitas, we're going to make chicken fajita bowls. So I've got some chicken here that I've just got thinly sliced, about a quarter of an inch thick. And then to this, we're going to add some avocado oil. Just enough to coat the chicken. Some lemon zest. Or you can do lime zest. I didn't have any lime, so we're going to do lemons. Some sugar. lemon juice or lime juice and my spice mixture in here i've got cinnamon paprika oregano and some cayenne pepper so we're just going to add all of that in here and this combination makes for the best chicken fajitas they're just so good. So I'm just going to mix all of this together until everything is nice and well combined. And then we're going to cover this in plastic, some plastic wrap. And we're, we're gonna let this marinate for about 30 minutes. So that way everything gets nice and tender. In the meantime, while this is marinating, I'm going to go ahead and cook up some rice and slice up some bell peppers and some onions and get those ready to go and then we'll get this chicken fajita mix going all right y'all it is time to make some fajitas so i've got my skillet here over medium low heat if you have a non-stick skillet it will work just fine i'm just going to add a little bit of avocado oil to my pan and I've got my chicken here, and it has marinated for about 30 minutes. I'm just going to add all of this right into the pan. And I'm going to spread this out just a little bit. And then I'm going to leave it alone, and I'm going to let this cook for just a couple of minutes. And then I'm going to start tossing it around and let it finish cooking. It should take about five to six minutes. All right, so this chicken has been cooking for about five minutes and it's cooked completely through. Now I'm just going to add in my onions and my bell peppers. We're going to cook these down just a couple of minutes until they're nice and tender. You still want a good bite to them though. You don't want them to be too, too soft. We'll add a little bit of salt to the peppers and onions, just to help them kind of soften a little bit. We're just gonna cook these down. All right, so this has been cooking for about 10 minutes and I just stirred it up, let it sit, just a couple of minutes and then I kind of come in here and mixed it up again. So now it's got some nice good color and it is done. It is good to go. I'm just going to let this sit here. I'm going to chop up some herbs to go on top and probably make some either chop up an avocado or make some guacamole. I'm not sure yet, but we'll get some toppings together and make our plates or well, make our bowls. All right, you guys, here is my dinner. I just added some rice to the bottom of the bowl, topped it with that chicken fajita mix, so good. And then I just made a simple guacamole to go, uh, to go along with it. And then I just added that, some sour cream, hot sauce, and a mixture of parsley, cilantro, and sliced green onions, and this was so delicious. 
today I'm going to be making something super simple and that is sausage dogs and curry french fries. So I've already got my potatoes washed, peeled, and sliced. I just cut them into wedges. You can cut them however you want. Uh, that will be perfectly fine. So for these french fries, I'm going to add some olive oil. You can do whatever kind of oil you have on hand. Going to add a little bit of that, some salt, some pepper, and you can go ahead and add any other kind of seasoning that you want if you don't want to make curry fries. But that's what I'm making today is these curry fries. They are so easy and simple, they're delicious. I've got some curry powder and some coriander here, and I'm just going to add that right onto the potatoes and then I'm just going to mix this together until they're all nice and combined with that seasoning and then we'll get these in the oven. All right so these are all nice and coated in that seasoning and they smell just divine. I love curry french fries. They're so good. So now I've got these all in a single layer. I'm going to give my hands a wash and then we'll get these in the oven. We're going to bake these at 425 degrees. We're going to cook them for 20 to 25 minutes, flip them over, cook them another 20 to uh, 25 minutes until they are cooked completely through and they're nice and tender on the inside and golden brown on the outside. All right, so now that the fries are almost done, they've got about 17 minutes left to cook. We're going to go ahead and cook our sausages and I'm going to start by adding a it's about three quarters of a cup of water to a dry pan. And I've got my heat on low for this moment right now. We're going to bring this up to a boil. So I'm going to turn my heat up to about medium low. And I've got some sausages here. You can use hot dogs. You can use whatever kind that you have on hand that you like, that your family enjoys. And I'm just going to add these into my pan. And we're going to cook these for about 5 to 10 minutes in this water. And it's going to help these get plump and cooked through. And then we're going to take these out, split them in half, not all the way through, just enough to where they kind of open up so we can fry them on both sides. And this is the brand of sausages that I'm using. This is the Polish sausage. These are so good. If you can find them at your grocery store, I highly recommend trying these. So I'm just gonna let these go for about five to 10 minutes until all of this water is evaporated. And then we'll go from there. All right, so all of the water evaporated and I took the sausages out and I just split them down the middle and kind of open them up like this. So that way they'll lay flat when we cook them. And I'm just gonna go ahead and add some oil to my pan and these are gonna just help it cook up, get a nice color on it. And I'm going to place my sausages in the pan cut side down. We're just going to cook these up until they get a nice color to them on both sides. And then we'll take them out and then dinner will be done. The fries have about eight more minutes left. So once this all gets done, I'll show you my plate. Here is my plate. I have my sausage dog here and I just topped that with mustard some chopped onions and some banana peppers but you can top it however you want i don't like ketchup on my hot dog but you do you and then i just served it with the curry fries and some ranch dressing and this was so good today i wanted to keep it simple and just make like a sheet pan dinner so i went through everything that i had that i need to use up and I've got some salmon and some broccoli that I need to use. So I figured to make a sheet pan salmon dinner. To start out, I've got my oven preheated to 425 degrees. 
we're going to start with our sauce. So I've got my pan over medium low heat and I'm just going to add a little bit of butter to my pan and we're going to start making the sauce. So I've got the butter in there and now I'm just going to add my garlic. We're going to let that get fragrant. Turn my heat down just a little bit. Now that that's fragrant, it didn't take really all that long to get fragrant. I'm going to add in some soy sauce, some brown sugar, some lemon juice, about half of a lemon. And then I'll save the other half to kind of squeeze on the top later. Give that a little mix. And I'm going to add some salt and pepper. I'm going to bring this up to a boil. Let this cook for maybe two or three minutes just to thicken up slightly. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and add my broccoli to a lined sheet pan and get that ready to go. And then we'll get everything in the oven. All right, so this cooked for about three minutes or so, and I'm going to stop it here. I've already removed it from the heat, and I'm just going to set this to the side so that way it'll cool slightly and kind of thicken up. And now we're just going to go ahead and get our broccoli going in the oven. Okay, for my broccoli, I've just got a little bit of broccoli here. And I've already thawed it. Um, you can do fresh. I would blanch it a little bit. But if you want to do it just fresh and then roasted, by all means, go ahead and do that. But I always keep frozen broccoli on hand in the freezer at all times because it is one of my daughter's favorite vegetables. So... I'm just going to add a little bit of olive oil to my broccoli here. And I've got the zest of one lemon. And I'm just going to add that right over the top. And we'll mix this in in just a minute. Some salt. And some pepper. And I think that will be good. I'm just going to go ahead and mix this together. That lemon zest is going to add a ton of fresh flavor to this broccoli. And it's going to go so well with the salmon. But I want to get the broccoli going first. So that way it has time to kind of roast up and get some of those nice crispy char marks on it. So good. So I'm just going to spread this out. And we're going to roast this at 425 for 20 to 25 minutes. And then I'm going to take it out, flip it, and let it go another 10 to 15 minutes. And then we'll add the salmon. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to write down what I added into the sauce. It was, just in case you're wondering, it was a quarter cup of soy sauce, quarter cup of brown sugar, two cloves of garlic, some lemon juice, butter, salt, and pepper. I think that's not everything that I added to it. But I'm going to go ahead and get this in the oven so that way it'll start cooking and we can add the salmon. All right, so I just removed this from the oven and I slid my broccoli over to one side of the pan and added my salmon. And I am going to go ahead and add some of my sauce. Now, I removed three quarters of the sauce to a little bowl and set it to the side so that way I can add more to the salmon when it gets done. I'm going to go ahead and brush the salmon with this delicious sauce. All over. And now I'm just going to put this back in the oven for another 10 to 12 minutes. Maybe a little bit longer if you have thicker salmon, but these are on the thinner side. So I'm going to check these about 10 minutes and then this will be done. I've got some leftover rice I'm going to heat up. 
and then dinner will be ready. Here is my plate. I just heated up some rice in the microwave with a little bit of water. Just kind of perk it up a little bit. And then I just top that with that salmon, add a little bit more of that delicious sauce. And then I just served the broccoli on the side. This was super simple to make, a very filling meal. We loved it, it was so good. All right, you guys, I am wrapping up this week with making some quesadillas. I love quesadillas. They're so easy, you can put whatever you want in them. So, I've got some tortillas that I need to use up. I have these burrito style tortillas that really need to be used up. I've got some leftover chicken fajita mix that I made the other day. This needs to be used up before it goes bad. And I've gone ahead and shredded up some cheese. In here, I've got pepper jack and cheddar. So I've got that ready to go. And I've got my little skillet here, my flat skillet, heating up over medium low heat. And we're gonna get these started. All right, first off, I've got some avocado spray here. I'm just going to spray my skillet. And this is just going to help these get nice and crisp. And I'm going to go ahead and put my tortilla down and let this start to get warm. I'm going to add a little bit of cheese. Now with quesadillas, you can add whatever kind of filling you want as long as it's nice and cheesy. So I've got some cheese. And I'm just going to put this on half of the tortilla. And I'm going to add some of this delicious fajita mix. Kind of spread that out. Okay, I'm going to add a tiny bit more cheese just to glue this one side to the center of the filling. So that way it doesn't get, you know, doesn't come apart and it stays nice and cheesy. I'm gonna let this go for a few minutes and then I'm going to flip this side over onto the filling, let that cook and then flip it over and remove that from the pan. These come together so quick. Now that my cheese is starting to melt, it shouldn't be too long now because I want this cheese to get all nice and melty. Put that right there. I'm going to let this go on this side for a couple of minutes, flip it over, let it go on the other side for a couple of minutes, and then I'm going to remove it, cut it into wedges, put it on a plate, cover it with a tea towel while I make the rest. All right, this is nice and cheesy. I'm going to go ahead and put this on my cutting board, and I'm going to let this sit for a minute while I make another one. While this one is cooking up, I'll go ahead and cut this one in wedges. Here are all of the quesadillas. Once they are done, they were super easy to put together, a really quick dinner. And here is my plate. Now I kept it just super simple and just added quesadillas. I added some sour cream to a little dipping bowl with some hot sauce, kind of made a spicy sour cream situation. But this was so good and it is a great way to use up any leftovers in your refrigerator that you need to use up that's going bad. But I hope you guys enjoyed this week's video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to leave me a comment in the comment section down below. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.